Hello everybody and welcome to the first RC overview video on this channel. You might be thinking, what is the RC overview? The idea is this is sort of a series that I've been teasing for a while on the channel of where I take planes I already have and sort of show them off to you and give you a mini review if you like. So this is the E-Flight Weep Night Visionaire. Now this is from E-Flight, it's a Horizon Hobby plane. I've had it for two or three years. Um, I got it at a Western Park show for my birthday a few years ago. And of course the main attraction of this model to me is that little bit there. Night Visionaire. So this is a night flying plane. Now, I will hopefully cut in some footage of what it looks like in the black dot lit up when I flew it the other day. And that's the reason why it is in this video, because I flew it recently. And while it was sort of built up on the desk, because I flew it locally, um, I thought I'd show it you. Now, I have had night flying planes before, where they had the LED, and, and friends have had it, then I've watched them fly them. Where they've had just like LED stuck onto a, an already made plane. ST Models MX2. Chris Foss Watt 4, but that got very heavy. Um, and that's fine. But the problem is with them is that you're basically following lines in the sky, bright lines, and it's very hard to see. And hopefully, as you can see from the footage of what it look, this plane looks like lit up, um, you're basically, even though it's black dark at night, it's as if you are following like a normal plane in daylight because it looks the same. Um, the colour scheme on this is really good, so most of the colour on here isn't see-through. So this top bit of the wing looks white. And then when you're looking at it from the underneath, because this red is a bit see-through, you see the red. So it's basically white and red is what you're watching in the sky for doing your um, for knowing which way up the plane is. Now, this plane has not been perfect. In fact, there has been a video on this plane technically previously on the channel. Um, to do with some horrific Horizon Hobby custom services. Basically, the motor and speed controller were faulty in the end and um, didn't appear to replace them for me. And it sort of goes through the woes of the different parts on this plane. Um, so I'm going to revert to my notes and be right back. Okay, so the way I'm going to take this is basically going to go front to back and basically go through all the issues. Some of them are big, some of them are small. Uh, and then I'm going to give you like an overview at the end, because I do like this model. Um, as of a few nights ago, I actually flew this uh, for my first and so far only flights in 2021. Well, we'll get to it then. So, a lot of the problem with Horizon Hobby planes, especially their small electric stuff that I've always kept away from, really, is it's all their stuff, and they make it priority, not priority, proprietary, sorry, for no reason. So for example, this propeller, you might think this is just a standard propeller with a spinner. It isn't. If I can try and show you around the back there, you can sort of see it in the bottom of your frame. You can see my finger down here. So instead of having a normal spinner where you have a back plate and spinner and then just annual propeller, this propeller is specifically moulded. Can I get that lined up a bit better for you? So this propeller is specifically moulded with little lugs on to keep the spinner from pushing in too far. Which is a pain in the arse because it means that you kind of, sort of, really need to buy Horizon Hobby propellers instead of any old other 11 5.5 or whatever this is that you might have on your shelf. Again, a problem. Now, motor and speed controller. Um, as I say, I had issues with this. It turns out they were faulty. Um... I kind of think that if it wasn't for the lights and for the fact that um, everybody has a 3S2200, then um, they would have gone 4S on this. It's a big enough model to be 4S. It is very light. Um, but, you know, not fully thrilled. It's a power 10 motor, but with a slightly higher KV than the one that's um, like you can just buy off the shelf from E-Flight for a ridiculous amount of money. Um, I'll just mention this undercarriage quickly. It is just wire and it does get squished quite easily, especially for flying it at night where it's sometimes hard to see the ground. It does get squashed quite easily. 
Now the speed controller, again, it's using EC3 connectors. As you can tell, I've changed them on the end. Again, Horizon Hobby proprietary. They're not very good. I have experienced, I have heard of people where the, the ones that come, because I know someone, and he always buys E-Flight, you know, buys Horizon Hobby blades, buys Horizon Hobby batteries to put in them. And he has the, so they're from the factory of EC3 connectors on, and they'll pop off. And then the plane crashes. So, you know, and that's not his own fault. This is, is his connectors. You know, with these are hard to pull on just the wires. You know, he's quite good at pulling off the plugs, especially after the first one that crashed because of this issue. And yeah, it's not great. Another thing that's a bit weird with this one is because of the light switch. So this is just to turn the lights on and off. As you see, it switches on the red wire and that wire runs towards the midsection, which we'll get to in a moment. So that they can just sell parts to you already pre-soldered up. Instead of having this integrated into the connection, Basically, that's separate. That, that's the speed controller cable. And then they have this sort of little junction here, which then you plug into your battery, which is to say, I've swapped to this. Which you, I see why they've done it, but the same, t but, it's, but you know, it's easier for them. You know, it's not a specific part for this plane, you know, they, or not a specific speed controller for this plane. It's a normal 30 or 40 amp speed controller that's underneath there. And then this little adapter on. That's fine. And you can see, it just switches the red wire. Okay, no problem. Now, the batteries. Um, I'm just going to pop you there for a second while I get your one. Now this is what I was saying about the everybody has one of these. The problem is, is that a 20, 25C battery, which is what I had from Bixler's and what my Watt 4 flies on and things like that. Nope, you have to use these higher power batteries. I actually bought these specifically for this play to try and improve the power issues. So these are the Zippy Compact 40Cs, which are not brilliant. I vastly prefer the regular synergies. These are... 40 to 50 C for a plane called the Elmira, but I've been borrowing them uh, for the other few nights. Um, so yeah, your, your standard 20, 25 C batteries that everybody has, which I presume is what they built this plane around, are not powerful enough on the C rating. So you know, if you're not someone who does 3D, obviously you wouldn't notice that much. You know, if you're just flying it around but wanted the night plane, that's fine. But if someone who wanted to do 3D, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. Another thing I will notice on the speed controller is something that I've, I'm very sort of mixed on is when you start running low on battery, it pulls just like which, and then it doesn't seem to let you if you if you if you sort of power from power back on it, it doesn't seem to give you the power back again like some other speed controllers do, just to try and nurse it in. So actually, the last time I flew this, um, it landed heavy, it squished the undercarriage, which I've already mentioned, and knocked one of these side force generator things off the bottom. We'll get to those in a moment. Um, but yeah, so I'm not 100% okay on that. What's good about it on this plane is actually, if you, if you've got the lights on, because of the load being taken on and off the motor, the lights flash up and down. So it's very visible <laughs> that you're running out of battery. Um, so the battery speed controller, as I say, we've got the switch. So in the night vision as it comes, again, we'll go on to some of the modifications I've done in the middle section. You can either choose to have the lights on or have them off. So it runs at full brightness of your LiPo, obviously. And at full brightness, it is quite bright, but it's better than it being too dark, I guess. And again, because it's 12 volt lights, that's why it's three cell. Or one of the reasons it's three cell. Otherwise, they'd have to have some sort of converter down to 12 volts and all this other job. But, I mean, I've just ordered one for VBEG, a 12 volt, you know, four cell to 12 volt adapter thing, which I'm going to use to hopefully fix the nano talent, possibly. Or, or rig that up so that FY41 could be used. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're not into FPV, you have no idea what any of that means. Um, so as we move further back, big, nice big ailerons. Um, I will also notice, really, like this canopy. A couple of things I didn't mention here that I've suddenly remembered. The strap that came with it was useless. Um, and, again, just Horizon Hobby being different. On all their planes, it seems like, you know, on most planes, I think everyone's saying they have the fluffy, as I call it, on the battery. They have the rough stuff. <laughs> ha 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 ha. On the plane. Horizon Hobby is the way around, so I'm just trying to take out this tray, which I had to take out anyway to get the speed controller set off to Horizon Hobby to deal with. Um, so I had to put new Velcro on. If you want to learn more details on the Horizon Hobby issues, if you do a search on this channel for Horrendous Horizon Hobby, uh, one of the videos on there, because there's quite a few, because we've had multiple different, re multiple different issues, one of them with that Profit charger over there, um, you'll see one where it's one of these uh, as the thumbnail, and that goes through the issues I was having with the motor. Right, so my next problem with this is the way that it's built with basically two screws to hold the wings on, fine, excellent, 
everything else is sticky tape. So these fins, I think it's easier for you to see on this one, they've got like, you can just see a bit of black there, they've got like black rubber, double-sided sticky black rubber. So you stick one onto the plane and then stick these on. Now, what's good is that they have thought about this, so it's actually recessed slightly, so it can take the thickness of the sticky foam. That's fine. It means that it's quite nice and flush. Problem is, though, is when they get knocked off or they fall off, for example, they're going to be very hard to put back on again. I just touched, squeezed it back on. It seems fine. But what I prefer to do personally is glue them on. But because it's recessed, I can't just take the black thing off. I'd have to sort of slap glue on top of the black thing and squeeze it in. And then it might not be, might be stuck out too far because of the thickness of the glue. Blah, blah, blah. All a bit of a disaster. And also the tail plane, if you can see, is meant to be just taped there. Because I was going to, I knew I was going to fly this fairly rough 3D, and I'm not bothered about putting it back in the box. I glued it in, <laughs> but yeah, it's all meant to be no glue. Um, but sometimes that can backfire. Um, you know, I wasn't going to trust just tape to hold that in, so it is uh, glued. I think there is a bit of tape on there, but it is also glued. So what I'm going to do now is flip the model upside down so you can see the bottom bay, and um, where there are quite a few modifications. Okay, so I flip the model over, and we can see what's going on down here. Here's the undercarriage fitting, kind of standard. Again, wire undercarriage bends quite easy, but oh well. Here are the screws to hold in the wings, one on that side. The servo was, if you're interested, I'll give you upside down that way around. Weep. They are focus. Focus. EFLR. 7155, which are important, and I'll get to the reason why in a little bit. So you can see the, the rather striking design of the bottom of the plane. You've got these side force generators, I call them, although they're technically not. You've also got the sort of shark teeth on the underneath to help dissipate air or sort of shit. A hole there. Um, that's my understanding is that's not glue from me. That's how it came out the factory. Can we see the speed controller in there? No, we can't. Now, one thing you might notice here, for people who are wondering, that's my registration number. When I was flying it the other day, I thought, just in case the fun police get called, because, you know, it's at night, I play my lights on, people go, it's a UFO, or we are technically in lockdown. I, I class it as my daily exercise, and, you know, I walked from my house for about two minutes, and then flew it. Um, I thought, just in case the police call, let's at least make the plane legal and have my flight registration number on there. Um, so yes, there are some modifications in this bay, which I've suddenly realised I need to unscrew, so just bear with me a moment. Okay, so I have taken the belly of the beast off and dug some of the stuff out so I can show them you. Now this model is only available as Bind and Fly and Bind and Fly Plus with the battery and everything. So I've got it Bind and Fly. To be fair, it wasn't too bad, because I think this was about £180 at the show. Something like an ST Models MX2, which is the same size as this, meant to be a 3D plane. Um, they are about one, still about 110 120 So to be fair, you're paying, what, 60 quid, And it came with a receiver and Horizon Hobby Tax, which compared to the stuff they're selling now is ridiculous. They're just fucking stupidly expensive. Um... But yes, so there's obviously some clear modifications in here. First of all, the Futaba 617 receiver. I did actually fly this once or twice on the Spectrum receiver that came with it. It's one of the AS3X auto balance ones. So you basically had roll me back level if I'm new button. You then had a switch for like low rate and high rate with different levels of gyro. On a plane this size, there are planes that I agree need gyros. The little beast that we have, like the ultra micro one. That needs a gyro in it. The gyro makes it fly because it's a much bigger plane. I was watching Rami RC the other day flying an AL-37 um, jetliner from Freewing. That was being knocked about in the wind. I was like, that needs a gyro on it. A lot of my FPV planes have gyros in. I'm just not the biggest fan of gyros in 3D planes. Um, especially because... If you want to go from sort of smooth stuff to sudden aerobatics, you can't and then... You know, you got to remember to flick out of it and stuff. It's oh, just a fucking nightmare. And the fact that it would only let you do everything 3D or everything low when you might want a mix of both. 
pain in the iris. So, this of course has no gyros in it. It also uh, allows me to have individual rates that I can set myself and are not programmed by the receiver, by the factory. I can set them up as I want them to be. So yes, that is that. Now for the lights, what normally happens is you have that cable coming from the switch, which I think is that, possibly, yep. Yeah. That goes into this sort of distribution board and all the lights go out from there to all the different places. Now, I have installed this, which is a very old piece of equipment, a LiPo Fly 74 from Jamara, which is LiPo 1 to 3 Zellin, which I presume is German for cells. Now, what this does is it is a brushed motor speed controller. Instead of brushless, it's brushed, so it only has two wires, motor negative and plus here, battery negative and plus out here. So that actually now runs to the switch, so you can turn it off and on, but then this runs into this receiver, and I have a switch. You might be able to see that I can, I'm switching the lights on the model, on and off. Um, and I'm doing that without having um, to go in the model and switch it on and off. The problem that I do have with this is it seems to forget its end point. So every time I turn it on, I have to teach it. Um, you know, so I plug it in with the lights off on the radio. Then I have to switch it to full and then knock it back. Now on this, I just have like a... It just, it's just on a switch, so it's uh, off, mid, full. When I get this moved over, I haven't bothered doing it yet, but when I move it over to my Tyrannus with the Futaba um, module in the back, which I need to test on the Watt 4 first, and then I'm going to swap things. I was going to swap this, but my problem is, is that because I was flying in a more confined space than normal, if I had any sort of signal loss issues, this going in, I have been more upset about it, to be honest, especially now I quite enjoy flying it. Um, and also the... Um, because it's in a more confined space, it could hit something a bit more drastic. So, compared to just endless farmer's fields. Um, so, I decided we'll test it with a Watt 4, and then this will probably be one of the first ones to move over, because it's got the right receiver, it needs to be a 607 or a 617 to work. And, uh, yes. So, what I will do when it's on the Tyrannus is I'll have it on the slider on the side, so I can sort of infinitely adjust it, which is why something like this is better than just a switch. Servos in the middle here are the same as on the wings. I think they're both the same. Yes, they are. I have two problems with this. One of them is that the rudder servo is what we like to call nervous, which means it just kind of waggles on centre. And that may be something to do with when I roll it knife edge to the right, which means you've got to put left rudder in, the it, it goes like, like if this is the plane on it, you know, level flight, rolls on its side, it's... <laughs> the rudder servo isn't happy and I believe that is for one of two reasons one, when it's putting left rudder in in this configuration it's pushing the bar sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now please try a little later I will, no, sod off um, so I think what might be happening is the metal is bending and it's trying to give it and it's struggling it's sort of playing rocks about it's almost slightly dangerous and almost crashed it at one point because it was low when I did it. And so not only is the fact that the servos are not in the tail with like a, a, a thick a thick boy rod to stop it from bending, but also I think this rudder servo is getting a bit faulty. So that may have to be swapped out at some point. It will not be with one of these e-flight servos. I have a high-tech 85 hanging around that might go in. Um, but no, I, I, in, so yes, I'm, I'm not, really not happy with this it does come with rubbers on the clevises which are good always use a rubber kids um but yeah so you might think well you've listed a, a, a big load of negatives there so are you getting rid of the model do you not like it what are you, what are you doing with it i know these aerials are not improper but it never flies that far away so i'm not too bothered um but i actually really like it because i'd only flown it in the day to test it and had issues with the motor and everything got fed up with horizon hobbies customer service being shite and all of that malarkey. Uh, but now it's been like years since that's happened. And I've mostly forgotten about that. Um, I still want to buy stuff from Horizon Hobby because of it. But, you know, it's not fresh anger in my mind. Um, just flying this as it is now. With, you know, the, the light setup that I've put in. No gyros, which is how I personally prefer something like this to fly. Um, you know what? I um, actually really like this plane. Um, 
I've never flown it in the dark until the other day where I flew it twice. I only flew it twice. I took three batteries with me. Um, but people kept like slowing down the road to look in. I thought, let's just, just in case one decides to call somebody or, or whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll leave for today. Um, so, um, yeah, I really enjoy this plane. Um, is it the most extreme 3D plane in the world? No, but it will do rolling arrows. It'll hover um, now with, with enough power um, and all these other things that, you know what? I actually really like this place, and I'm glad that I've got it. Um, so thank you to my parents for buying this a few years ago. Because I was sad at the time, you know, when somebody buys something and then it's kind of crap, you do feel bad. But no, now it's actually flying. I really enjoy it, and I want to keep this for a long time. Especially in January, where we are now, where we can't go flying. So I'm just... The reason why this is still brought up is because the idea is I wanted to go flying again after work. Um, I could do it basically through a fence near my house and fly the thing. Um, it could be my daily exercise, you know, I was, I had a bad day at work, decided I wanted to fly something, went and flew this, um, not only did it sort of calm the mind, you know, it, it was fresh air, because I hadn't been out of the house in like two weeks, other than just to get into my car, go to the post office, go in the post office, come back, you know, it was a good sort of 10 or 15, 20 minutes out in the fresh air, which is good for you when you're working from home and everything, you don't really leave the house, not that I really left the house to, before coronavirus, haven't we know, so... Yes, that is the Night Vision Air. I'm not sure if they still sell it or not. Would I recommend one to you? Um, yes. Depends how much they are now. If they are made, brand new. But maybe, if, you know, if you see one, you know, someone selling one for 80 quid that's in decent nick and all the lights still work and you fancied flying at night, especially if you live in the UK where, I mean, you know, the sun's coming up at half past nine, it's setting again at half past four, then... This is brilliant, especially if you've never flown night flying before. I will recommend the lights and the wing setup, you know, in the fuselage and everything, much more than the LEDs just stuck on the plane. They do kind of, in some ways, look better, but for actually using it to fly with, this is the type of model that you want. And I know there are other models that do have night flying lights in them. Which you might be able to get. I know a lot of flexes have like for 50 quid extra, you can have a night fly option. Which, to be honest with you, if I'm spending that much money, I'd probably go the extra 50 quid and buy the one with the lights in. But, um, no, um, if you see one of these for sale and it's at a sensible price and you're thinking about doing some sort of night flying, buy one. If you want one as like a 3D trainer, probably wouldn't recommend it. It does fly well, um, for 3D, um, but there are better options out there personally. And, you know, it's not going to be some extreme 3D machine, but if you're doing something that's relaxing 3D in the park, then this is about brilliant. Just make sure, as I say, that you've got decent batteries. Well, that's going to be it. This is the first series of the sort of RC overview series where I take planes that I already own um, and sort of run through them. You're going to probably see a lot more of these as I start moving stuff over from my Futaba 14 is here to the uh, Tyrannus and uh, but yes thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a like feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions and if, depending on where you're watching this feel free to either subscribe to the channel or follow my page thank you very much for watching bye bye